The Roman Empire ruled Britain for centuries, starting around 43 AD and not leaving until 410 AD, but it wasn't all smooth running. In 60 AD, Boudicca, the Celtic queen of the Encini tribe, which was around the Norfolk region of Eastern England today, rebelled against Roman rule, killing tens of thousands of Romans in the process. So why did Boudicca rebel? And how close was she to victory? Initially, things were very different for Boudicca. Boudicca's husband, Prasitagus, ruled the Encini tribe as king of the Encini tribe as an independent nominal ally of Rome. The Encini tribe themselves had previously rebelled against Roman occupation in around 47 AD, but this rebellion was suppressed and the Encini tribe were allowed to keep their independence to some degree anyway after the rebellion was suppressed. The problem arose when Prasitagus died. In his will, he had left or he wanted to leave half of his kingdom to his daughters and the other half to the Roman Emperor. When he actually died, however, Rome ignored the wishes of the will and seized his lands and his property. Boudicca, his wife, was dragged through the streets and abused. His daughters were raped. This abuse of Boudicca and her daughters is one reason often cited for why Boudicca snapped and rebelled against Rome. Other factors were at play, however. Other sources point to more financial incentives for many of the Encini tribe and the surrounding tribes in Eastern Britain to rebel against Roman rule. The Roman historian Cassius Dio, for instance, points to a few financial reasons. Firstly, the Roman philosopher Seneca was said to have recalled loans he had previously made to some of the Britons. Secondly, he argues that a Roman official, Decianus Catus, had confiscated money that was previously loaned to certain Britons under the Emperor Claudius. Tacitus, the historian, argues that one main reason for why Boudicca revolted against the Roman Empire was due to the rapacity of Catus. As is usually the case, various factors compounded to cause Boudicca to rebel and to have the wider support from other Celtic Britons to rebel. Boudicca launched a rebellion in East Anglia. Along with her Encini tribe, Boudicca capitalised on other Celtic Britons who had been aggrieved by the Romans. The neighbouring tribe of the Trinovantes soon joined Boudicca and the Encini tribe along with numerous other groups, in rebellion against the Roman eagle. The timing of the rebellion was perfect. The Roman governor of Britain, Gaius Suetonius Paulinus, was away on campaign in modern Wales, and the island of Mona, modern-day Anglesey, slaughtering Druids, with many of his forces with him. The Celtic queen capitalised on Suetonius being far away in Wales, and sacked Camelodunum, modern-day Colchester, overpowering the Roman force that was stationed there. The inhabitants of Camelodunum appealed to Catus for assistance, who only managed to send 200 men. They made little difference to the outcome. Boudicca's forces tore through the town and set fire to the temple of Claudius. Emboldened, Boudicca and her force did not stop there. They quickly moved on to sack Londinium, modern-day London. Suetonius, who had heard word about the sacking of Camelodunum, had made his way back to Londinium in order to try and head off Boudicca. Suetonius's force, however, was light and he did not manage to have any notable impact on Boudicca. He had to flee, and Boudicca's forces set fire to large parts of Londinium. Across this campaign, Boudicca's forces are said to have killed anywhere between 70 and 80,000 Romans, torturing many, with a lot of brutality used on both sides, as was the case with most wars, most wars um, around that period of time. This rebellion, however, did not just strike fear into those stationed, those Romans stationed in Britain. The Roman Emperor Nero was said to have even considered withdrawing his entire force from Britain because of Boudicca's revolt. Suetonius managed to regroup and reorganise his forces, however. They met Boudicca's forces at a decisive battle known as the Battle of Waitling Street. The Romans, however, tore through the poor armed Celtic Britons, who, unfortunately, had actually taken many women and children in wagons to accompany them to battle. The Romans showed no mercy, and an estimated 80,000 men, women and children were slaughtered by the Romans. In comparison, on the Roman side, losses were said to have only been around 400, although these figures, as always, 
as history is written by the victors, were made or estimated by Roman sources, so exactly how accurate they are is, is obviously up for debate. What is not up for debate, however, is that Boudicca's revolt in an army was decisively defeated and Boudicca's revolt was suppressed once and for all. The battle pretty much ended any resistance to Roman rule in southern Britain for hundreds of years, and Rome ruled Britain until around 410 AD. Boudicca did escape the battlefield on that day. She either killed herself shortly after, or died of illness shortly after, depending on the source. Irrespective of this, Boudicca's revolt was well and truly suppressed, and Rome was in complete control of the Encini tribe. Her revolt, however, has lived on for centuries and millennia, a David versus Goliath story, and it was somewhat resurrected during the English Renaissance of around the 16th, 17th century. The revolt itself was obviously significant enough to cause worry all the way up the ranks of the Roman Empire, all the way up to the Emperor himself, Nero, who apparently did consider withdrawing all his Roman troops from Britain due to Boudicca's revolt at one point. Obviously Rome re-established control and was in control for hundreds of years after that point, but Boudicca's revolt is quite incredible in and of itself. But please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please also subscribe to Celtic History Decoded and tell your friends and family about this channel. Please also share this work on social media, um, any blogs you have, and feel free to use this work um, to comment on, to you know, clip up uh, for, for your own works if you yourself have a channel um, or, or write a blog or whatever. Um, you can also support this work through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or make donations through PayPal. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.